Hello and welcome to another lesson in our series about organic reactions. Today, we will talk about polymers. You might ask, what is a polymer? And the answer is actually all around you. Polymers are often called plastics. Plastics have only been around for the last 80 years, but in that time, plastics are made in so many shapes and used to make many different products. How do all of these plastics get made? Well, the organic reactions are actually quite simple. Before we make some polymers, let's see what a polymer is. The word polymer comes from Greek and means many parts. So let's look and see how these many parts come together. When ethene joins together many times, we make polyethene. We call ethene a monomer. You may remember this example from the lesson on addition. The big molecule is called a polymer. These types of polymers are called addition polymers. This is because an addition reaction is used to put the polymer together. All addition polymers start with an alkene. These are the monomers. The name of the polymer is derived from the monomer. Ethene makes polyethene. How does one write the formula of a polymer? We cannot draw all of the carbon atoms. Well, it's actually not too difficult if we know the monomer. First, we need to find it in the polymer chain. When we write the polymer formula, we identify the part that came from the monomer. In this case, the monomer was ethene. We write it in between two brackets with the letter N on the outside. This shows us how many monomers make up the chain. Now, two questions remain. How does this reaction start? And what conditions are required for addition polymerization? To start an addition polymer, we begin with something called a radical. A radical is simply an atom with an unpaired electron. Radicals are often made when a covalent bond breaks. We represent the unpaired electron with a dot. R in this diagram represents an atom or molecule. Now radicals are chemicals that readily form new bonds. So they form a bond with the monomer and this breaks the double bond. They also make a new radical. This process is called initiation. Now I'm sure you can guess how this molecule gets longer. If we draw the new radical next to another monomer of ethene, we can see that the same thing happens once more. This is called propagation. Sometimes two radicals form a bond and this stops the polymerization. This is called termination. After this, the chain no longer grows. Polyethene or polyethylene as it is sometimes called is a very useful polymer. It is a thermoplastic. This means that it can be heated and molded into many useful shapes. Polyethene is a widely used plastic and is found in plastic bottles, toys, and parts of computers. But these plastics are so durable that they stay in the environment when we are done with them. So they build up and after time they present a danger to animals and look unsightly. So, we need to be responsible and reuse plastics as much as possible. This is the symbol for polythene. It can be recycled and remolded into new products. Many plastics can be recycled and here are their numbers. Number two is HDPE or high density polyethene. Number four is the low density polyethylene or polythene. Look for these numbers on your plastic goods. There are other ways to make polymers. Polyester is another form of polymer that can be made using esterification reactions. Polymers like polyester can be made from two different monomers. One is an acid with two ends. The other is an alcohol with two ends. Try to draw the molecule that these two would make. This is just like other ester reactions. The carboxylic acid combines with the alcohol to form an ester, but this also allows more reactions. These polymers join more and more monomers by forming more and more ester bonds. 
each time water is produced. For this reason, these are called condensation polymers. One of the really important skills is to find the monomer that makes the polymer structure. Let's take a look at some of the polymers and identify the monomers from the diagrams. See if you can identify the monomers and draw them. Try to find the units that are repeated. As you can see, the monomer is identified by the units that repeat. When we break away the unit that repeats, a double bond exists in the monomer. Do you remember what these types of polymers are called? Once again, these are addition polymers, like those we saw earlier. You may also be asked to do this for condensation polymers. See if you can identify the monomers in this chain of molecules. This particular polymer is called polylactic acid and is actually environmentally friendly. Polylactic acid can be broken down into monomers by bacteria, fungi, and yeast in nature, like this. It is also one of the plastics that can be made from materials like maize, and not from oil like the other plastics. As you can see, this is a condensation polymer and forms ester bonds. Breaking these ester bonds is difficult and requires special equipment. Polylactic acid is not the end of plastic pollution as it must still be gathered and placed in a special composter to break it down. So use less plastics and reuse the plastics that you can. Because, as amazing as they are, they may all end up in the environment. Can you draw the polymer formula for these monomer molecules? Here's a hint. See if it will form an addition polymer or a condensation polymer. The first polymer is a condensation polymer. Can you see how the water is formed? The second monomer makes an addition polymer. This one is called PTFE or polytetrafluoroethene and is used in nonstick pans. Well, that's all for this series of lessons on organic reactions. But please check out the other videos as well as the task video or look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye for now.